Today I'm going to show you how to use this tool, which is called a dragonfly, or the word in Japanese that I'm not going to try to butcher translates into dragonfly. And it's traditionally uh, made by taking two sticks and connecting them together and all you need is a couple of pencils and a hair tie and a sharpie or marking implement. And we're going to use that to make a set of cups to make sure that they're all the same. But first, I'm going to show you how to make the dragonfly. So to make the dragonfly, you only need a, either a couple pieces of wood, um, small dowels will work, but I just find pencils lying around the studio that I use, a hair tie or rubber band, and then a marking implement. Uh, when I'm in my own studio, I use graphite so that I can erase it, but it's really hard to see on camera, so I'm gonna use a Sharpie so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, if you want to use a Sharpie for your own studio, what you can do is take sandpaper and use sandpaper to remove it off the pencils when you need to reuse your dragonfly. Um, but first, let's learn how to make it. So ideally, you'd have one pencil that's slightly shorter than the other one. And first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take their eraser ends and I'm going to cross them like so and put the ends kind of close together. Then I'm gonna start with the longer pencil and I'm gonna loop my hair tie or rubber band around that end. Then I'm gonna loop it around uh, the short end, cross it, and flip it back over the original post. Now before I go to the next step, I need to slide the pencil all the way through so that the other end is closer, otherwise the rubber band won't stretch as far. And then I'm gonna pull it tight and twist it around a couple times to make sure it's nice and tight. And you also wanna make sure if you wrap one end too many times and the second end not enough or it gets too tight, it won't be straight. So you need to kind of work the rubber band around until it actually goes um, pretty close to perpendicular across that line. Now what you do with this when you're making a set is once you've made your first cup and you know that it's close to what you want or it's the ideal shape that you're going for, you take the dragonfly and the first thing you adjust is the height so first you put the end of the pencil or your dragonfly and lightly touch the bottom of your cup and you can actually do this on the wheel as you'll see um, when we actually use it and then you slide the top piece down until it's gently resting on the lip so this is how you're marking what the height is you don't even have to mark with your pencil or a Sharpie. And then the second thing you're going to do is you're going to mark the width of your cup with the Sharpie so that when you're throwing, when you go to the next one, you can easily move from one to the next and double check to make sure that they're exactly the same. Now this will measure the height and the width, but what it will not do is it won't measure the outside shape. Um, so that's something you're gonna have to use your eye for to make sure you're getting a similar shape and similar lip thicknesses. But um, that's how you make a little dragonfly. Okay. So we're gonna start with the clay uh, already centered, assuming you know how to do that. If you don't, please watch one of the videos on centering first. Uh, when you're throwing on the mound, you want to make sure your ball of clay is centered into a cone shape because it'll be easier to take the clay off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's centered and I'm going to bring up the cone and try to get a similar shape to what I started with when I threw my original piece. And the goal of throwing on the mound today is to make something small that matches uh, in a series of cups. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to press into the clay to make a knob. And I'm gonna use my hand to round the bottom of the knob out so that that clay doesn't get in my way. So now we're pretending this is the only clay that exists. Pretend there's a wheel here. We're going to make a tiny little cup out of that. So now I'm gonna open the clay and I'm gonna support it with my right hand. Put more water if you need to. I'm gonna compress the lip, and then it's just like throwing on a small scale. The key to throwing sets is to try to do everything as similarly as you did the first time. Try to do it the same way each time. To check the height and the width for this piece, we're going to use uh, the dragonfly. And what I did for my first piece that I threw 
is when I threw it, I put the dragonfly into the middle so that it was touching the bottom of the pot. And then I marked with a Sharpie where the edges of this were. So now when I make sets, I can easily check to see how similar they are in height and width. So I'm gonna go check this one. I'm gonna put this straight down. Make sure your wheel's not spinning. I'm gonna put it, rest it on the bottom and see how close I am. So you can see that I still have a little bit of space here, so it needs to be a little bit taller, but I'm right on on width. So I'm gonna bring up a little bit more height. I'm gonna round the lip. Now you still have to pay attention to what shape you're making to make sure it's a similar shape. But if you can get the height and width really accurate, then you're more likely to have a really, really matching set. All right, now to remove this from the mound, the step a lot of people forget is you need to make a little indent with your finger so that you have somewhere to lift the pot off with. And then when you go to cut it off, you don't wanna spin the wheel, you just wanna pull straight through. So I like to wrap it around and support the pot and pull straight through. And then you can lift it off the wheel and set it on your back. I'll do it quickly one more time.